What is going on guys? Welcome to Greggles TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. We have a couple of news stories, a big one in fact, because there's a lot of speculation thrown away on around that one story that I'm going to talk about in a little bit, and also a bunch of questions from you guys. As always guys, I release a video in the morning as well, so check that one out. It is my Pixel 6 Pro review, a phone I freaking love, and it's really tugging at me to jump and leave and go back to a candy bar phone versus my foldable phone. But we'll wait and see what ends up happening, guys, because I'm, I'm, I'm really torn. But regardless, watch that video. It'll be linked down below. With that said, let's jump into the tech news. First story of the day, this phone, the Galaxy S21 Ultra. I already got the third beta for this one, and it looks like the full release date for everybody all around the world is right around the corner because of this One UI 4.0 beta program for the S21 in South Korea has concluded. And usually when they do that, that means the actual full release is right around the corner as well, meaning that the software is stable. They fixed most of the bugs. Obviously there's always gonna be bugs in software, but they fixed the majority of the major bugs on the phone and Getting this in your hands, the full version should be right soon before we have it. So I would guess November is looking like the date this is gonna come out. I don't think you'll have to wait to December. Maybe some people will, but ultimately I think November, most people will have had the update pushed to their phone no matter where you live. Next up, Google had a really big announcement. Big announcement not only for big devices, but big in general of some news that we can probably gather from this and feed our imagination. So they announced that they are going to release Android 12L for tablets and foldables and also just regular phones as well, but the phones won't have as many features as 12L will get for tablets and foldables. And the reason I talk about this is because this is a big push for big devices, for again, tablets and foldables. But I think the bigger one from this is foldables. We have the Galaxy Z Fold 3. This has their own, this has Samsung's own version of the software with a lot of great tweaks and customizations and just way to use this phone so it's more comfortable because it isn't such a huge display. But, you know, Google, even though they've kind of rendered their software for foldables, they haven't really made a huge push in that direction. This is that huge push. This is where we're going to most likely see the Pixel Fold. And when are we going to see the Pixel Fold? Well, the release date for Android 12L is due to come out in early 2022. So it doesn't look like the Pixel Fold is going to come out at the end of this year. It was rumored that it was gonna come and launch at the end of this year. My guess now is that it's going to be 2022, probably the first three months of 2022 when we'll see a Pixel Fold. Now this software also will work on non-Pixel phones and Pixel tablets and stuff like that. It's just my thought behind this is if, if Google's really pushing this as a one-off or, or an update for their software for foldables and tablets, you gotta think that they're gonna release their own due to the rumors that have been coming out, but we also haven't seen anything of what this phone's actually going to look like. So that's my prediction, that's what I'm gathering from this, and this is a huge get, and I'm super stoked because I will admit, and I kind of said this in some other videos, it, I love the, the, the Pixel 6 Pro, but if you made that a fold, and it had a big screen and the Pixel cameras and the Pixel software and the Pixel experience, I would, I'd probably, I'd probably put all the money in my bank account down that I would leave the Galaxy Z Fold 3 for that Pixel Fold. So I'm super stoked about this, guys. What about you? Are you excited about a Pixel Fold potentially in the near, near future, early 2022? Let me know in the comments down below. Below. With that said, guys, let's jump into the Q&A portion of the video and drop that. First question comes from Alan Silverman. Greg, I have a question. When is Android 12 coming out to the S21 Ultra? Obviously, I kind of answered that out already. It should be November at the very latest, no, December. So November, December 2021. Jerome Gold, question. I thought you said you wouldn't go back to a candy bar phone after having a Fold 3. I totally did. I am not denying that at all. But there's just something about this Pixel phone that makes me want to use it all the time. 
if honestly, if my eyesight probably wasn't, my eyesight's not awful, but if it wasn't as bad as it has become over the years, I probably would have just stuck with this phone, but it's so hard to leave that Z Fold 3 because of the huge, huge display, but I really, really love this phone, and it remains to be seen if I'll end up jumping to this or not, we'll see. Cletus Cassidy had never done a beta before, even with my old Samsung phones. Will I be missing anything if I download the beta for the Z Fold 3 or just wait for the full version? So you shouldn't be missing anything. The only thing that potentially might happen is your phone might be buggy. It might have issues where it can't do certain things um, because it just keeps crashing. And, and what I mean by that, it's usually things that, it's like an app that won't work because it needs to be updated for the software of Android 12. I, have, I don't, but I'll be honest with you, I, the times I have used the beta software on Samsung phones, it's been generally pretty good. And I feel like as time has gone on, the beta software has been good for almost all phones that I've tried it on from iPhones to iPads to uh, Samsung phones and Galaxy phones. So uh, you should be safe, but if I were you, I'd probably wait until that second beta releases before I actually download and install it just to be safe, especially if it's your only phone. Anthony Parker, if you could name one letdown or bust of the year thus far, what phone would you say would take that crown? That's a tough question because they're really, out of all the phones that I've personally tried that I would consider a bust. I, I wouldn't say there's been a huge bust, per, 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 you know, per se. Um, it just hasn't been anything really that has blown away its previous generation of the phone. Like every phone has just pretty much gotten incrementally better. Um, for me, I, I would say, and this is not, I would say the biggest letdown for me has been the Galaxy Z Fold 3 just because of how much I was blown away by the Galaxy Z Fold 2. But I don't mean that in a way that the Z Fold 3 is a bad phone or it wasn't improved in ways or that, but I just a letdown in a way. I was just so excited and I just didn't build up my anticipation as much as the Z Fold 3 just because it was so, so, so incremental. And the camera, man, I run into it on a daily basis. The camera on the big display that sits underneath the display is a pretty big letdown. Anthony Parker, again, thank you for another cool video, my 6 Pro. We'll be here tomorrow. I still can't believe we are calling this an S22 Ultra. This is a Note 22 Ultra all day, every day. Question, do you think that the Pixel phones are the best as far as upgrading software features are concerned, or do you think that they would go to another phone? Well, Pixel phones, especially in America, usually when there's an update pushed out, you're gonna get it right when you hear about it. Whereas with Samsung, it's kind of like, you have an unlocked phone, oh, those unlocked phones got it, but the people that have the T-Mobile version didn't. So you kind of notice that usually um, that the Pixel phones will get updates quicker and stuff like that. So I'd probably say the Pixel phones are, are gonna get updates a lot quicker. iPhone's obviously the best. You know, you hear about an iPhone update, you got it, it everyone's got it. But Pixel comes in second and then I'd probably say everyone else on the Android side. Bruce C, can you please explain more why you think the Pixel 6 Pro is the best Android phone to buy right now. So, you know, like I said in my review video, it's not the best at everything, but it does everything really, really well. Uh, for me, why I think it's the best phone for most people on Android is the camera is uh, really difficult to mess up a good shot. It takes great photos. I don't feel like you can always get a great photo with a Samsung phone due to the fact that, you know, I have kids, I say it all the time, my, my son, I take a photo of him, he moves ever so slightly, it's blurry or it's soft looking. I don't really have that issue with the Pixel phone. So cameras like are, are amazing thing to, and a lot of people use cameras. Um, so that's been awesome. The software in general is just so smooth. It's definitely the smoothest that I've used on an Android phone thus far. Um, and then beyond that, it has pretty much every feature that I want from my P rating and wireless charging and updated software and a nice screen. And I, that's why, and the price is very, very competitive. It's, it's really a no brainer device if you're looking to come over to the Android side. This is a great review, thank you. Question regarding the keyboard, he's talking about the Pixel 6 Pro. I love the Swift key for my S21 Ultra. Will there be any issues using Swift key on the Pixel 6? Can I maximize all the tricks and perks? I'm looking to possibly make a change. Thank you again for the video, good luck. So I don't use that keyboard, but I don't see why you wouldn't be able to customize and do anything and resize it on that phone at all, especially with that being an Android app. I wouldn't have any 
I wouldn't have doubts that you'd be able to do it. Do I know for sure? And do I use that? No, I don't. But I, you shouldn't have any problems with that. And I really think if you haven't tried the Pixel 6 or 6 Pro, I think you wish really, everyone should probably give it an opportunity at the very least to try it out a week or two and just see if you like it because I think you'd be very, very happy with it. Dave says, I love your videos. I have an S20 uh, Note Ultra. Is that real? <laughs> Not sure I upgraded the S22. Samsung will probably only give me $500 for trading. Do you think the specs are that much better? My storage has micro SD slot. Um, so, I, I think at, we're at the point now with the S line that you're gonna see a lot of incremental updates. If you need the S Pen and you want it to be integrated and you want that whole experience, yes, get the S22 Ultra. Will the S22 Ultra be a better phone overall versus the S20 Ultra? Yes, without a doubt, it should be. So, I mean, it really depends what you want. If your phone's starting to slow down, if your phone, you're not impressed with the cameras, then yeah, upgrade. Um, but ultimately, just day-to-day -day operation of using social media, taking some photos here and there, videos, you're probably not gonna see, honestly see that big of an upgrade. Here you guys go, that is your questions all answered. Thank you so much for submitting your question. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below with the word question and I will answer it in tomorrow's video. Don't forget to check out my Pixel 6 Pro review. We'll see you down the road. Peace.